All right, when's Mashiach coming? We're waiting a long time already, right? No, it's coming. I'm ready. ready. I'm ready. So the Talmud says that Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi once asked Mashiach, when are you coming? And what did Mashiach respond? Hayom, today. So at the end of the day he came, didn't come. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi was very, very upset. He asked Elijah the prophet, what, what happened? So Elijah explains to him, today, yes, today, if you observe the commandments, if the Jewish people observe the commandments and are, and are therefore ready for Mashiach. So the, the preordained date of the coming of Mashiach is a guarded secret. Okay? The only thing written about it, about when it will happen, is that it will come in its time. Okay? There are many dates potentially that it could have happened. And there's one end end date at which point there's there's no there's no if ands or buts that Mashiach must come, but that's a very guarded secret. By in fact, the Talmud speaks in some cases harshly about those who try to calculate the exact time that the Messiah is going to come. Why why do you think the Talmud would frown on such a practice to try and calculate the exact date? So a few reasons. Number one, if it doesn't happen, it will be national disappointment. And people's faith in the, in the idea will be weakened. Every once in a while you hear like these radio people, right? They, either the radio people or people on TV, some, some guy gets up, he said, the end is nigh. You know, he puts on him, uh, a, one of those sandwich signs, the end is nigh. He's, you know, hear ye, hear ye, on the corner of, you know, Main Street and uh, whatever street. And says, you know, the end is nigh, and this is the date, and whatever. I remember a few years ago, there was billboards around May, something, is the, that's the end. So what do you think happened when, when the date came and there was nothing, nothing with nothing? So people who followed this character or whatever, right, disappointment. So we're, we, don't, we don't try and calculate dates, number one, because of national disappointment. If it, if it didn't, were not to happen on that date for whatever reason, if we weren't worthy per se, let's say. Also, it increases the likelihood of false messiahs coming up. If you announce that it's, uh, you know, it's supposed to be, you know, let's say March 2015 or whatever, that, that also, you know, maybe 10 guys get some ideas in their head. Hey, you know, March uh, can make a little plan. I can make a little magic. You know, it can make a little show. It, 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 it like increases the likelihood of uh, false messiahs stepping up to the plate and trying to uh, finagle something. Also, a very main reason why we're not supposed to know the exact date is because part of our tradition is to await his coming every single day. And if he's not coming till March, why well, not have to wait for him today? So our, our objective, we, we have to await and anticipate like he's coming every single day. And in fact, every day, three times a day, several times in our prayers, we ask God not only for Mashiach, but that he hasten his coming. We want it and we want it now. But the redemption, the redemption is unfolding. The time, the time is ripe. You know, as the years have gone by, and one of the reasons also why the earlier sages frowned upon the idea of sort of uh, anticipating the exact time of, of Mashiach's coming, because if it was so far off, that may also disappoint people. If, let's say the people 2,000 years ago, oh, the, the Mashiach's coming in 2,000 years. Well, they say, oh, come on. But now that it's getting so close, there is, there is more reason to talk about it and at least discuss you know, the workings, what's, what's meant to be before Mashiach comes, and the ins and outs of what's supposed to take place, some signs to work for, signs of the time. So let's, let, it's kind of like, um, you ever go on like a family road trip? So when you first leave, right, you back, out of, you back out of your driveway, what's the first thing the kids ask? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Right. Meanwhile, you're going to Disney World and it's uh, three hours away, right? As soon as you back out of the driveway, are we there yet? Right. So when, when they first ask, because it's the beginning of the trip, you you, try, you don't even answer because it's just so far away. Like they can't even relate that. No, we got a long way to go. But as it gets closer and you start seeing the signs and you see the Mickey ears on the, uh, you know, it, it's very clear that you're getting close to Disney World. 
you start telling them, oh, look at the Mickey ears, look, signs are coming, we're getting close, we're getting close. Oh, it's, just, it's the same thing. This is actually the way that the Malbim, the Torah commentary, describes uh, the coming of, of the coming of Mashiach, and, or just sort of the, uh, the contemplating the end. You know, 2,000 years ago, when Mashiach was a far-off concept, I mean, again, Mashiach can come at any time, but the, the end, the end, uh, the end time, the final, the final time, if, if we weren't worthy, let's say, and, if, and he's just coming, ready or not, here I come. So it was a long way away. And so when the people are asking, it's like when we back, back out of the driveway, right? Is he coming yet? Where's Mashiach? Is he coming yet? So like, don't even answer. Don't even bother contemplating. But now that the signs are right, and we see the Mickey ears, and it's, it's getting close to Disney World, right? The signs are right. The timing is right. Stuff's going on in the world. Now we could start, at least, you know, our ears can pop up, our eyes can open, we can brace ourselves and get ready for what's, what can be coming. The Chafetz Chaim, who lived approximately 100 years ago, said even a blind person can see that we are living in the generational time of Mashiach. All signs indicate that he's not far off. So, so the Chafetz Chaim said that signs are ready. Even a blind person can see, says the Chafetz Chaim. Contemporary sage Moshe Sternbach, Rabbi Moshe Sternbach, said that um, exile is nearing an end and that the conditions for Mashiach's coming have been fulfilled. The Rebbe, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, and not just the Lubavitcher Rebbe, but the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe and the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe before him, throughout their entire lives, every address, especially the Rebbe, every address, every talk, every lecture, always concluded and always always centered around this is the time Mashiach's on the way let's get ready let's embrace it so our sages let's talk about the signs I don't want to disappoint Yoni so our sages discuss the, the Talmud the Gemara and Avayda Zara describes the world as existing for 6,000 years or existing uh, humankind the, on, on our history from Adam six, plus 6,000 years. Okay? First 2,000 years are called the years of nothingness, because that was before even the Torah was given. Even not until the very end was Abraham even born. It was two years of sort of void. Then the second 2,000 years from the year 2000 to the year 4,000 on the Jewish calendar was the era of Torah. And in those years were when we had Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob live, when we had the two holy temples stand in Jerusalem, all of our prophets, that was the time of Torah. And then the last 2,000 year period, right, beginning from uh, approximately 200 CE, right, until the year 6,000 according to the Jewish uh, calendar, is called, that whole period is known as the era of Mashiach, where, again, Mashiach could have come any time. That's the time that's most ripe for. And as time progresses, there's even more ripeness in, in his coming. Okay? The Talmud in various places also gives us signs to kind of look for in the degradation of society sort of like the pitfalls of what's going to happen to our society and to when these things happen to sort of think to ourselves all right we may be getting close let's talk about some of those signs yoni you listening all right perfect here's some of the downward spiral that we have to look forward to or that we're currently in all right it begins with large segments of the jewish people scorning their traditional values of their religion um, neither parents nor the elderly being respected. The old will have to seek favor from the young and from one's household. Uh, one's household will become a place of enemies. Insolence and impudence will increase. People will no longer have respect for authority. And uh, there will be no one who can provide uh, any type of correction to it. Wisdom shall become putrid. Truth will become abandoned, and religious study will be despised and used by non-believers to strengthen their false claims. The government will become godless, 
the learning academies will become places of immorality, and the pious, the righteous people, will be denigrated. This will be coupled by oppressive inflation and many destitute begging with nobody to take pity on them. Okay? Those are some of the signs to look for as far as a society, the negative parts that come with, with uh, as we near Mashiach's coming. It doesn't paint a, a very rosy glow, a very, a very beautiful uh, picture. But the truth of the matter is, is that on the other side of the coin, you know, it's not just the bad stuff. There's a lot of good things that we're gonna that we're gonna discuss in just a moment. The way in which the way in which the the um, Talmud lays out the history of our people as we near the year six thousand, the year the six thousand year period is meant to parallel the six days of creation. God created the world in six days, rested on the seventh. So the Talmud learns from there that the world will exist for 6,000 years from Adam. And the 7,000 will be a time of, like, where every day is like Shabbos, right? Like the eternal, eternal Shabbos. So this every day uh, in the creation model is like a 1,000 years of our historic time. So if you sort of calculate that... Um, if you sort of calculate, you know, uh, every thousand years as a 24-hour period, let's say, okay, so then every 42 years or so, every 42 and a half years or so, is another hour on the cosmic clock, like where we are, right? Because each, remember, each day of creation, as it's described in the Torah, parallels a thousand-year period. So every thousand years is like, if you want to know what's a cosmic hour, you can divide it into 24. So it's about every 42 years, 42 and a half years or so, uh, is another hour on the cosmic clock. So where are we holding right now? What's the Jewish year on the, on the look on the calendar? 57, 75. 57, 75 out of 6,000. So we're holding Friday afternoon. 5750, 1990, was midday. Now we're 20 years later, so we're almost at 1230. We're midday and a half. So that was, that was one year. 1990 was one year on the cosmic clock. Let's take it back a cosmic hour. 42 years before that is 1948. Anything special happened that year? I don't know. Something, something, uh, something happened. Right? Whatever... Oh, okay, yes, yeah, right. Well, if we, uh, we know our math people, we know our history people, whatever. You don't, we don't necessarily have to, to use it as a rule of thumb as to tra tracing back every 42 and a half years or whatever before, before that. But the idea is that every, every day in the creation model is meant as a part of a cosmic clock. So we're here, we're, we're, we're here Friday, Friday afternoon. Okay? The truth of the matter is that just like anything else, you know, on, on Friday afternoon, you're not supposed to wait until the sun actually goes down to start Shabbat. You're not supposed to. You're supposed to take on Shabbat a little bit early. It's a mitzvah, actually. To take on, what? To take, to, well, to actually accept Shabbos, to, to take it on earlier than, earlier than Shabbos comes in. It's a mitzvah. Right? Let alone the preparations for Shabbos and that if you, ha if you want to eat on Shabbos, you have to prepare on Shabbos and everyone's busy cooking Friday afternoon, all the preparations. What happens? What happens Friday afternoon in a Shabbos house? All the preparations start getting crazy. Everything starts getting fast. Right? Everyone wakes up, the morning comes. Monday through Thursday, it's just talk. You know, Sunday through Thursday, I should say, it's all talk, it's theory, it's, okay, who should we have as guests? And it's, uh, what kind of foods do we have? What kind of menu? It's all sort of ethereal, right? Friday afternoon, you walk into a Shabbos observant house, there's hustle and bustle, there's, people are mopping, people are showering, people, the whole house is crazy. Everything speeds up. And so the same thing on our cosmic clock, the way that everything takes place and everything transpires, we're operating in this cosmic clock, and this cosmic speed up. 